Hello there. You probably wondered what happened to me. Well, what happened is we have beautiful fall weather. I've had lots of lots of uh, company and I've been busy putting my garden to sleep and just enjoying all the beautiful fall colors that we have. And I went out probably a few weeks ago now and picked some beautiful leaves from some of the trees mainly the maple tree that I have out, outside. It's so beautiful and red. And I was going to have painted the leaves before they dried, but um, I realized that that wasn't gonna happen. So I put them in my sketchbook, my big sketchbook here, with some paper towel underneath them and on top of them so that they wouldn't mess up the paper and actually what I noticed is see they 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 died they died my paper towel blue where they were really wet and a little bit pink there so anyway that, I just found that interesting but here they are beautiful leaves that I can use as inspiration for some little paintings. I've been trying to think about how I want to work going forward here on my channel because you know I had those videos that I had already edited that had been up on um, Skillshare and then they were taken down and so they, I was free to use them myself so you know so that was easy because they were already you know almost ready I just had to do a few little tweaks to uh, to use them on my channel here. And I have been trying to think about what is it that keeps me from being more regular on posting. And I can tell you right now what it is. It's the editing. It just takes too much time. It takes hours and hours. And I have to find a way to share some watercolor inspiration on my channel without logging myself into at least 8 to 12 hours of editing every time to produce a video that's about half an hour long. That's just, you know, I, I just, I don't want to spend that much time on editing. It's fun to edit a little bit, but it's not fun to edit hour after hour after hour. So, just a heads up on that. So I'm going to use these leaves for inspiration and I'm going to use uh, my sketchbook and I'm just going to get over to the other side and then see if I have already uh, some taped off and if I don't I'll tape it off and then we will have a little fun. I made a division in my book, I, uh, my, my, my big art journal and I used washi tape just decided that, you know, I have so many about washi tapes, I never use them, and now I'm going to use them. And I kind of uh, laid out some of my dried leaves, and I, I decided just, I only want one on each, I think. And I'm going to outline some of them. I think I'm going to start here at the bottom. So I'm just going to do that with a pencil. Of course you could also just draw them, but I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to get back to you because that's kind of boring to watch. Alrighty, here you can see I traced out those three and then my idea is I want to paint negatively around those other three. So let's see how that works out. Alrighty. I decided on some blue backgrounds. I made some different puddles and I'm just going to go to town and get it done. So I have some, I think this is a cobalt teal. And you just got to be brave doing this. It's not too much, you know, messing around. And I'm just going to take this one. And I'm starting up in the top because otherwise I'm going to get my hands in 
wet paint. And let's go with this one. So it's cobalt blue. Right now I have cobalt blue. Whoops, let's not move this thing. And so it was cobalt blue. So this is cobalt blue right now. And I have one more here. <clears throat> let's go with this one. And this one here is smalt. It's a color I really, really like. Or it's also called DuPont's Blue. And let's do a little bit more of that one. And then let's do some of this Thalo Blue green shade. And I'm hoping not to get any hard edges anywhere. That's my hope. There. That worked out pretty well. And look at the, the leaf. Hmm. Beautiful. Alrighty. And then I'm just going to spray in a little bit to hopefully get some texture before it dries. That's my hope. That's one, and I, I think I need a little bit more water on some of these. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. I like the position, yeah, that's good. So then let's start with this one this time. So you're kind of going, oops, just dipped into the wrong one, but that's okay. Uh, so you're kind of um, going in and going away from the leaf and you just got to do it with conviction, that's all. Just do it with conviction so it doesn't bleed in and stuff like that. That's that one. Let's go with this one. This is my French Ultramarine Blue. See, next to that smalt, it looks much more blue because the smalt it has more warm tones in it. So the smalt is kind of like a, it's kind of like a warm French Ultramarine Blue, really. And then let's get some of this here in. There we go, and let's get that out of there again, beautiful leaf, and let's get a little bit more texture, hopefully, we're hoping, and actually I think I might just get up and grab some salt. I have some popcorn salt here, it's a leftover from my class with Colin Holman a few years ago. Man, she was such a wonderful teacher. She passed away from that nasty cancer that I'm dealing with right now. Not the same cancer, but anyway, there's many kinds of cancer. And, oh, I think about 50% of all of us, sooner or later, will have to tackle it, is what I read. So just one of the challenges when we live so f so long as we do nowadays you know cancer I think is more prominent and maybe also because of lifestyle and pollution and who knows who knows Mother Nature has to come up with new ways all the time to keep us in check so but I'm doing really really well but having to deal with cancer and the reality that, you know, we all, we all know intellectually that we're not going to live forever, but until something really knocks at our door, sometimes we uh, act as if we're going to live forever. Oops. So that's also part of the reason why I'm being a little bit more, you know, 
subconscious or whatever you want to call it about the fact that I don't want to spend that much time staring at a computer editing videos so let's see how this goes and um, I would love to hear your comments below and what your thoughts are and how you think this one came out because this one's going to be minimum editing there a little salt done now we need to dry and I think it's time for me to take a little break and I'm going to actually take a little lie down because it's uh, kind of mid-afternoon and I think it's time for me to do my my breathing exercises that I do every day so I will come back when this is dry alrighty I'm back in the studio and everything has dried and the salt is still on I'm gonna leave it on for now and now I'm gonna paint those three leaves and I decided I bought a new um, color a while ago and it's the first one ever that I have uh, tried from La Carrel, a French art artist's watercolor. And it was somebody that commented on one of my videos that said that uh, this uh, Chinese orange was the most brilliant orange and uh, suggested that I try that out. And I haven't tried it yet and that's months ago. And I just tested it out for my little swatches. I'll show you later. But anyway, I'm going to try it out today. And then I want to use another kind of a mixed um, color that, you know, I usually like to use single pigment colors. And neither of those, are th those two oranges here are single pigment. This is the Aussie Red Gold from um, Daniel Smith. I have used or tried that before. So anyway, I'm going to put those two in there, and then I put out some Alyssum Crimson. And that's the three colors I'm going to be using, I think. And we'll just see what happens. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start with this one, from the same idea that, um, that way. I'm just going to put, it's going to be wet into wet. I want the colors to mix and mingle, so I'm putting clean water in. And you know, I am doing it in my sketchbook, and so it's not, it's 140 pound, but it's not 100% cotton because most sketchbooks are not 100% cotton, and that's fine. We are just having fun and playing, that's what this is about. Getting back in the studio and still filming for you, and hopefully, we'll see how this video turns out. I'll see how the process is getting it up. I'm trying to find my way back to my YouTube channel. So, lots of water. Let's try this new color, Chinese orange. And I'm just going to put some in here and there, there and here. I'm using a, a number eight brush. Not that it matters, you use whatever you got. That's how it is. Use whatever you got. Okay, there we have that. Rinse it out, dab it, and then get some clean water. And then let's get some of the Aussie Red Gold. And get some of that in. So that's more yellowy than the Chinese orange. There we go. There. I'll rinse that out. And then I have my brush already loaded with this Elizabeth Crimson. Put in a few places here. And then down here. See how that goes. I'm trying not to hold my breath when I do this. Okay. Go 
all the way down here. There we have it. That's one. I'm not going to be fussing with it, is what my thought is. Let's not fuss with it, Eva. So I'm just going to dab in a little bit more, a couple of spots where I see some white. Not that there couldn't be white, there could certainly be white. It's totally fine. And let's do a little bit on the stem here. There we go. Okay, good enough. Let's rinse our brushes. Gotta put that over here on this side. Because I'm left-handed. And let's get to the next one. That'll be this one. And uh, just I'm bending it like this so I can just get rolled uh, paint a little bit. And I'm going to keep an eye on it, and then uh, if I remember, before it dries, I'll put some, uh, I will put some salt on. Remember to be careful with these droplets that are on the ferrule. I think it's called ferrule. Okay, there's a little splatter there. Get water on the whole thing. So this one I'm, is my number 12. Lots of water, because we want those pigments to have something to travel in. And pigment travels in water. Watercolor pigment travels in water. And some colors run more than others. Don't really know where they are on the scale, these colors here. I didn't see any of them going whoosh like some colors go, like the thalo blues, they have a tendency to go whoosh. And lots of water. And down here. There we go. And here, let's start with the alizarin crimson. Why not? And let's get some of that down in the tip here. That's what I think what I want to do. You know, with these kinds of paintings, there's no right and wrong, and we're just playing and having fun. That's the whole idea. Okay, good enough. And let's go in and get some Aussie red gold. And that's the color that Daniel Smith came out with. That was quite a few years ago now, I guess. But I remember when they brought it. Brought it. Uh, and you know, it's just one of those. Normally, I mean, you know, you can make your own oranges. There's no need to go buy mixed colors. You know, that's really where I'm coming from. But, just like anybody else, I, sometimes I can't help myself. And I just have to try it. And that's okay too. But you don't have to. So I hope that you're just using whatever colors you happen to have. Or maybe like I'm doing here, using some colors that you don't use that often. Just, you know to try them out. So, let's go with the uh, Chinese orange and see. There we 
have that. And that's it. Okay. And let's uh, get a little bit of salt on here. It's drying very unevenly because can you see how it's running down that way and it's more dry over here? Doesn't matter. Just observing. And then let's see here if we can let that run a little bit. And let's move all my paints. I want to tip it a little bit the other way. There we go. Good enough. And back we go. Here. Okay. Going to wet this one. Lots of water. from those droplets here. Doesn't matter. As you can see, these leaves are not, you know, they've been through a whole summer. So there are the little parts missing here and there. There might be some holes in them, all that good stuff. What do we want to start with this stuff? Let's this time start with the uh, Aussie Red Gold. And a little bit down here. There. And then let's go with the Chinese orange. have it. Go out into the tip there too. And last but not least, let's get some more of that alizarin. Permanent alizarin crimson, that's what it is. So it's a very blue-toned, cool red. And it's again color that I don't I hardly ever use. And it's the this whole palette that I have here, that's the one that I used for the Julie Cone workshop that I took recently with the Share Watercolor Society. And I just used the colors that I had. So I had most of the colors she asked for, maybe not from the brand that she was suggesting, but I've really reached this point where, you know, when I take a class, I definitely want to try, you know, what this teacher is suggesting as far as colors and stuff, but I'm not going to go out and buy a whole bunch of new colors at this stage because I have over a hundred colors. So most of the time I'll have, if not the exact same, something very close. And I, I you know, I took the time to look up their pigment numbers and everything, and so got as close as possible. And most all of them are exactly what's, you know, at least pigment wise, what she suggested. So, that's good enough for me. All right, let's put some salt on here before it dries completely. And we might as well put some on here. And then we're just gonna let it dry. 
And in the meantime, we can kind of think about what we want to do here, if we want to do anything else. But we'll let that dry and then we'll, we'll, we'll decide. I was just thinking, before they dry completely, these leaves that we just painted, let's see if we can scrape in some little veins. Some of it is going to be dry, but it doesn't matter. There. We got a little bit. And that's all we want. Just a little bit. Don't want to go bananas here. There, and this last one we should get really good effect from. And I looked at the leaves before to kind of see how these veins are. Again, it doesn't have to be super realistic. There we go. Good enough. We got some veins in. I'm happy with that. I will let it dry completely. Good morning. It's the next day. I took the salt off using my credit card. I took the little bit of the lines off using my kneaded eraser. And now I have been contemplating what I wanted to do and I want to use my elegant writer to put the veins and I, you know, laid out a couple of the leaves here. I'm going to put out the, um, draw in the veins with this elegant writer. Just, you know, hit and miss. And just like that. A little bit more, a little bit there. And I'm going to do that. And the elegant ride I have here, mine happens to be a 1.3 XF extra fine, I think it's meant to, to indicate. And see, I've noticed that these veins to these first big ones, they come from way up here. So it's just kind of fun, you notice things that maybe you haven't paid attention to before. Like that. And then we have this one. So again, just very lightly, don't want to overdo it. This elegant writer, if you've never used it before, it's a uh, I love using it. Um, it it has a chiseled tip, and it comes in different thicknesses. And the, and this one's the black. That's the one I like to use most, and it's from a Speedball Art Elegant Rider. Um, I'll probably you know you can always look below my videos and find out. Where, where you can get these things that I use. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so that means I get a very, 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 very small commission if you use my link and, and buy that way. And uh, it doesn't matter to me, really, because, I mean, it's not like it's a... I hardly ever get any money from them because I don't, I don't sell enough, but that's fine. So now I'm just going to go in with a very wet brush over the lines 
and can you see how they flow out? Because that's how the elegant rider is. The first time you go over it with water, it flows out. After that, it stays put. It's the, it's the funniest thing. And it gives some really fun effects, I find. So I thought it would be kind of nice to get just a little bit of color on these here without really getting much. And I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I can dab it. And see, then it's like the pink. So it, it breaks up into um, like a magenta and a green. Because I guess that's the colors they have used, or the colors of ink they have used in this um, black pen to, uh, you know, uh, to make their black. Because black can, is a mixture of all three primaries. So here, and so they have used a green and a, and a pink, really is what it is. So let's just get some water in here and I, I make it very watery so that it gets a little bit of that flow going. I think that looks more organic that way. I like it. it that's how I like it. Like that. Clean up my brush again and then just a little bit more water here and there. And I want to make sure that I keep some of the white, you know, back there. I like that. Let's stab it. There. Oh, I love it. I think that makes it look fun. And that's what I'm after. I'm after fun. Fun and easy. Get me going this morning. I don't know what kind of weather we're going to get. It's still, uh, still kind of foggy which we don't get that often, but you know, it rained a little bit yesterday afternoon and evening. And so I was hoping to get out and get some of those, all those leaves in my yard picked up. We'll see. If I don't do it today, I'll do it another day. That's my motto these days. Try not to drive myself crazy with, you know, having to do this, having to do that, because, you know, it'll all get done in due time. Yeah, I really like that. Don't you think that's kind of cool? So then I was thinking before I do the very, very most fun thing in the world, which is picking off, picking off the uh, tape so we get the, the whole page, I thought, you know, first I was thinking about if I should put a little bit of color, you know, watercolor, just to mark uh, the edges. And I thought, nah, don't really feel like doing that. But you know what I will do? I will just outline with my Elegant Writer. And then I'll give that a little bit of water, probably. And we'll see. Of course, you know, the um, tape I have on here is so thin that I can't really feel it. It doesn't really stop the pen. So I'm sure I'll get some hit and miss, but we won't know until we take the tape off. And that's really, I love taking the tape off. It's the most fun you can have. I just do it straight like this. And down here. And then I'm thinking I want to just do like this. and rinse my brush and just kind of let that fade out. Rinse my brush because you know as soon as I stick it in here it gets a little bit of that pigment on that ink and I'm not, I don't really want any, see it got a little bleeding off the yellow. That's okay. Whatever happens is okay here. 
okay? That's don't, you know, it's the whole idea. And then, you know, can pick up a little bit. I think that looks cool with the tape on. Let's see how it looks without the tape on. In a minute, in a minute, we'll get there. Good. So I have lots of water on, as you can see. Lots and lots of water on. Down here. And rinse it out, and then I dab it a little bit. Just so I can get no hard edges. That's my idea. Don't want, really want any hard edges. Just want it to just kind of naturally blend in. If I get a little bit of a hard edge, like here, I think I can take care of it. Same here. Yeah. Dab it. Cool. One more to go. See how fast and fun and just relaxing this is because there's no pressure. That's the thing. No pressure art. So, I, I tend to like to start from the corners. Okay. And then clean it up and then just go in here. and see if we can avoid getting hard edges. There wasn't very much white space left here. That's okay. And clean. Make sure your, your paper towel, you get a clean side so you don't just dab over. All right, have a couple of edges here that I want to get rid of. Not that it matters. There. I think this is pretty good. Okay. I'm going to call that done. I could, you know, keep going, but, you know, then we overdo it. And let's not do that. So, let's come to the fun part. Taking off the masking tape, the, this is so much fun. Be a little careful that you know you don't tear your paper, but voila! I like it. See, I almost tore it there. That's okay. I think I think it was a good idea to just you know indicate the border there, but it's not like a straight line because it doesn't really fit with straight lines and. You know, real precise here. I love it. Don't you love it? I hope you had a lot of fun with this. And I'll see you next time I'm inspired to play in the studio. I hope you had fun. Let me know how it goes.